This is Vicky, also known as Dragonfly7673. It is Tuesday, January 19th, um, about 10 to 7. And it's been a while. I had, uh, because Tiff and I recorded after Christmas, I wasn't planning on recording right away um, that Tuesday. But I had intended to record the following week. But it turned out that my son needed help with something. I don't even remember what it was at this point. Um, and I try to record on days when best friend is gone. He teaches a couple nights a week. So, uh, so it usually makes the most sense to try and do it when he's not here. So I'm not taking time away from anything else. Um, plus, it's just kind of weird sometimes talking to yourself when there's somebody else in the house. Anyway, and then I was going to record last week, and I got the project from hell. Um, it needed to be done fast. It had was technically started in th around Thanksgiving time, but nobody told me about it because they were sending the emails to the wrong person who never spoke up or forwarded them. And I, uh, on either side. I kind of understood what happened, but on the other hand, it was really frustrating because I ended up working a lot of really long hours. Um, and then my, my boss said I could have this past Friday off, which was good. That made me feel a little better. And I was thinking, okay, I'll have Friday off. I will sleep in. I will record. Um, I'll have project time. No. <laughs> um, my son needed help with some stuff. And best friend woke up with a migraine that was so bad he was throwing up. So, the whole, it was all wonky. So, I don't even remember exactly how much stuff you know or don't know. I just kind of collected things that I know you haven't seen. Um, and I also, I did draw prize winners for December because we are all the way, we are more than halfway through January. So, I will actually do those right now so I don't forget at the end. So when I drew, I was so excited. This was the first time in forever that I drew four numbers and all four numbers were valid winners. Like they weren't chatter thread. There were no duplicates. I That's never happened. <laughs> so the first winner was post 125. It was Mountain Pearl for her Rolling Thunder Socks, and she wins a $15 Rivalry Prize. So, um, I just need to know which patterns. Um, same with our number two winner, Deb Knits 2. She was post 109 and knit an uh, Arnie and Carlos ornament. She also gets $15 worth of Rivalry Patterns. Post 151 is a Texas yarn. She made baby socks for her grandson. And she wins the $25 Etsy gift card. And then it's funny because she is also the prize donator for the last one. The last one is Jamal Knitter, Post 12, for her, this is the name of a berry, A-C-A-I. I think it's a say, I'm not sure, but it's a, I, a say hat. And she wins um, patterns from a Texas yarn, who is also Allison Ziegler of Allison Ziegler Designs. So, um, Jamal Knitter, you will need to contact a Texas yarn um, to retrieve your pattern prize. Um, that was one where we had decided that because you might want some patterns now, but you might also want to wait for some patterns in the future, you should go directly to Allison and um, you guys can work out uh, how you want to split up the prize. And so those the last three months, uh, thank you to Allison for donating those prizes. Um, there's no special one in January. Um, I'm hoping I took that off the thread now that I'm thinking about it. Um, in February, 
and March. Um, February or March. Now I have to remember. Kaner, who is part of our, uh, she's a viewer, she also opened an Etsy shop with some beautiful yarn. Um, when we had our fear, fearless uh, knitting summer, she decided to learn how to dye yarn and actually really liked it, so she opened an Etsy shop. This January is a really busy month for her, so we are putting off her prize. Um, but it's coming. All right, let me post pictures of the winners because if you didn't hear me say your name, maybe you'll see it. All right, so once more, that was Mountain Pearl, Deb Knits 2, A Texas Yarn, and Jamal Knitter. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the last one right. All right, so things to show you, things to tell you. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I finished spinning this. Um, I don't remember. The color name was Carly. I called it Neon Carly, and I don't remember it anything else about it. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I should have looked that up. Um, and just as an FYI, I will probably not do show notes this week. Um, after last week of the busy, 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 I need to take the breaks where I can. So I'm not going to post show notes this week. But if anybody has any questions, please feel free to contact me. If you look in my hand spun stash, you will find this. Um, so it is very silky because it was 50-50 um, wool and silk. Or maybe it's 50-50 wool and tencel. I don't remember. It feels silky. All right. I just have stuff everywhere. There's actually stuff that I could show you that I'm going to hold off on. Um, I got a couple books from Best Friend for Christmas. I will hold off on those. I have some yarn that I got from a... Uh, well, partially from a fundraiser, and then I added on to my package. But I will show that later. Um, yeah, I'll show those later. I have a Tiki Tiger. I also, when I was with Tiff, I had started this comfort shawl. And um, I had told you that I wasn't sure if I had enough of the gray to actually make a full shawl for being a rectangle. Um, and I wanted it to be fairly sizable. Well, when I went to the store, I ended up getting this uh, blue-gray mix. And so what I did is I did gray, blue-gray, gray, blue-gray, gray. And it's actually... I forgot how much this stretches. So when I was looking at the first little bit, I was thinking, oh my, I need a whole lot more yarn. Well, I didn't actually need that much more because um, I forgot how much it stretches. I still, if I was going to do this one again, would make it five, um, five repeats shorter. That would still give it plenty of width and it would just be just a little bit faster. <laughs> Um, I probably could have done four stripes and it would have been plenty long enough, but I wanted it to be all nice and symmetrical. So, um, this is a comfort shawl for the, uh, Threads of Compassion out of the Blood Center of Wisconsin. Um, when someone, uh, passes away and donates organs, bone marrow, um, they, uh, they offer the survivors comfort shawls. So when dad passed away um, three years ago, the, they sent uh, shawls to Tiff and mom and me. And so this will be the third anniversary where we are uh, 
sending shawls back to remember him. So I actually have, I showed you this one the last time, and I have this one. And then, because I actually ended up with a funky amount of gray yarn, because I bought too much thinking I needed more, I then was also looking through, maybe not the gray, I don't remember now. I was looking through my stash and I found some more skeins and partial skeins that went together. So I actually started um, a third one. However, I kind of stopped working on it because I started working on um, started working on other projects. But I actually took that with me to um, when we did Christmas with Best Friends Family. So we did Christmas with them uh, on the 10th. And uh, they don't care if I'm doing stuff. And so when we were in between time, I mean, not when we were eating dinner or opening presents, but in that in between time where you're just being family, I was actually crocheting on that. And actually my sort of nephew <laughs> likes to uh, come and hang out with, by me and show me what he's playing on. And so he'll sit by me and show me stuff on his Kindle and I'll be crocheting and we're all good. Um, actually, <laughs> speaking of which, when I got there, the first thing he did when he opened the door for us was let me know that the Minecraft hat I made him last year, he has been wearing it all the time. <laughs> so I was actually really happy. I had a very good luck with gifts this year. I mean, Tiff liked her cowl and mom liked her little miniatures, of course. You guys knew that. But, um, Rugrat, as we call him, telling me that he's wearing last year's hat all the time. Um, his mom, best friend's sister, uh, I made her the uh, scarfy shenanigans from uh, Josh Reich's, which I can show pictures of because I don't have it, but I gave it to her for Christmas and she immediately put it on and didn't take it off the rest of the night. Um, and then uh, I... We ended up seeing, well, that was another thing that happened. A, the, a friend of mine who, um, for the kids, I made the kangaroo and the blanket. Um, uh, the all different designer blanket. Um, their dad ended up having surgery and he was local here. So once we knew he was all right, we met them for dinner, which actually meant I could hand them the kids' presents and I didn't have to mail them, which was good because it was big. And apparently the kids love them. Um, the girl is, you know, she loves her blanket. She's not letting her maid touch it. And the, the boy apparently went to sleep with Rue right away. So it was a, it was a good year for that. Um, let me stop and post pictures while I'm thinking of stuff here. Here is another present that was very well received. Um, this is a hat I made best friend and I actually uh, recorded previous video so I'm going to insert that here. All right so this is a snippet um, that will be aired later. <laughs> I have a plan for best friend for um, Christmas present. Mom was digging in her stuff and found out that she has this Major League Baseball official uh, logo and uh, licensed team logo. Now, they are using them to make knit uh, jackets. I am not making him a knit jacket. For one thing, I do not think he would actually like it. <laughs> um, but she had noticed that it had the Cardinals logo in it. So what I am planning to do, and she gave me the yarn... I have red. <laughs> I've got some other colors mixed in. I've got, this is navy, I believe. Yeah. Um, white. Um, 
I'm going to be making him a hat. Now, he does not know this yet, and this is the weekend that he is gone for the entire weekend, and this Thursday evening. So I'm hoping to finally get this started with the hopes that I can actually finish it. Um, there is a chart in here. So it's actually a little hard to see. So um, I'm hoping I, I want to take it tomorrow to work and um, blow it up on the copier and then probably uh, color it in. So anyway, that's the plan for Best Friends Present. And hopefully you'll have other little snippets and I won't delete it like I did that other time. <laughs> the last time I recorded, I told you that I was going to make Best Friend a hat. Well, it's actually been long enough that I finished the hat. So, here it is. It is actually, I'm folding it out, based on the lined beanie by... Uh, Heather Kinney. I think that's how you pronounce your last name. Anyway, it's Heather of the podcast Fiberista Files, or um, she sells yarn under Highland Handmaids and spindles and roving. And <laughs> anyway, it's her line beanie pattern. And I just knit the inside mostly in navy because I knew I didn't need a lot of navy here. So I knew that wasn't a color I was going to run out of. And, uh, then switch to red a little bit before the end. There's one purl row to make that fold in easy. And then I started the uh, then I started the color work right away. I did a combination of intarsia and stranded knitting. So because the red carried through so much, I actually stranded it, but I used intarsia for um, the rest of the colors and then intarsias normally worked flat because you need to have the you need to have bobbins of, of each color and you work them and then you don't want to carry them all the way around but I used a video on YouTube called intarsia in the round there's several of them just google intarsia in the round and this one used a wrap and turn method so you actually knit did a wrap and turn, purled back. Did a wrap and turn, knit. So you're still going back and forth, but there was no seaming at the end, and it kind of made, and this could be, be the way I did my wrap and turn, but it kind of made this cool looking item in the back. So I think you will like it. Um, if you want to see the insides, <laughs> the, the line beanie also kind of holds the uh, all the uh, color work, but not too bad. You know, there's a little bit of, of carrying back and forth, but if I was going to do this again, one thing I would do a little differently is I, the white is a little puffed up because I was carrying my floats too tight, but then I decided it kind of looked like a feature, so I kept doing it. So, um, this video I'm saving until after he gets the hat. So, all right. All right, so he has been loving that hat. He wears it almost every day. He doesn't have it right now because he it is bitter, bitter cold. So he's actually wearing a warmer hat that I made him in the past. So he basically at this point only wears hats I made him. <laughs> and he's now struggling because he has to decide which hat to wear. But one is one that I actually spun the yarn um, and knit the hat. Hey, see, stop that. I spun the yarn and knit the hat, and that one's really, really warm. Um, then there's this one that's warm because it's lined. And then um, he has another one that I made him a few years back. That's It's a nice hat. Um, it's not quite as warm. So he's got kind of varying temperatures. But he really liked this. I actually gave it to him before Christmas, um, before he left on his trip. And because we had decided, even though we had a few gifts for each other, um, we decided to give the kind of personal gifts 
before Christmas. So that was personal because I made it for him. And he made this for me. Um, this box is made out of Purple Heart and African Paduke. So this has uh, got a purple tinge to it. And this is a very pretty orange. They are both woods that I really like. Now, everybody that sees this says, oh, it's a keepsake box, or they think it's a jewelry box. And I could. I could do that. But that's not what he was thinking when he did it. <laughs> he actually made it. It's got dividers. So I could keep track of the little things that I tend to have next to me on the couch. So um, the ball of yarn for my uh, lifelines. And stitch markers and a thing of needles and a measuring tape and my little pair of scissors so all the little things are in here and the dividers actually can come out um they don't come out super easy because he figured that you know i pretty much decide what i wanted to do but they do come out if i decide that i want to so he made this to have next to me and i I really like it. So we both, you know, had that kind of special thing. Now, I also got him some, um, uh, my son and I got him some books, uh, the artwork of Lord of the Rings and uh, a, a kind of collector's copy of The Hobbit. And he got me some knitting books. So, oh, he also got me a pendant that's in here. The pendant has a kind of a story. It was supposed to be my birthday present. Um, but the artist, we haven't got a chain for it yet. The artist is actually a friend of ours. Um, and I can't get the card out because it's actually underneath the dividers in there. Um, he's a friend of ours and he actually hurt his shoulder, um, doing Aikido and because of that, he actually had to have sh shoulder surgery and he was out of commission. Best friend didn't want to explain to me why my present wasn't ready, wasn't ready, because if he told me that it was because of Mike's shoulder, I would have figured out at least, at least kind of that, it, I would have known it was jewelry. Um, so I actually got my birthday present. Um, at the same time, I got the box. So, but... I, as soon as we get a chain for it, I'll be wearing that more often. He also got me this shirt. <laughs> so, the, um, my dad used to always have flannel shirts. I mean, you guys saw when, um, mom took his flannel shirts and made blankets for Tiff and I. Well, one of the things that also would happen is I would steal a flannel shirt and I'd keep it and I'd wear it until it was ratty and which would be years and eventually dad would tell me I was embarrassing and he would take it away from me and give me a different flannel shirt but I no longer have any of his flannel shirts um which is sad on its own I just don't anymore um but best friend remembered that I really liked having one so he went to Duluth and got me this flannel shirt but he purposely got it as a big man's flannel shirt because he knew that that's actually what I wanted I didn't want a even though flannels now in style and there are women's flannel and stuff like that he knew that wasn't what I wanted so and then he was teasing me because I've been wearing it a lot in the evening because it's just well it's so cold outside that it's hard to keep the house warm without really cranking the heat and uh and we're trying not to do that um and so, <laughs> this has been something I've been wearing a lot. And he was teasing me the other day that, you know, I just apparently didn't like his present very much. And he was totally teasing because I was wearing it, like, nightly. <laughs> uh, I just remembered something that I was going to tell you. My condo sold. Like, it actually sold. I had a closing date. I gave them a big check because, unfortunately, the market went down and I was underwater. But it's gone. <laughs> so, um, that is now done. So, now I live here for sure. <laughs> I actually um, told mom that it was kind of, it kind of worked out. 
that it took a little while because if it had sold right away, there's still that part of you. We never lived together before, even though we were together a lot. We never technically lived in the same space. Um, so, you know, you're still trying to adjust and everything else. Well, by the time it sold, this is my house. This is where I live. My stuff is here. My yard is here. My cats are here. Um, we've merged everything and, you know, this is where I live. So by now the, the condo had actually become kind of a nuisance because I kept having to pay for the utilities and the, um, pay the utilities and pay the condo fees and pay the mortgage. So it's old. Yay. <laughs> All right. What have I been working on actively? Well, I, I don't know why I haven't finished these. I have finished one sock with the afterthought heel. I don't have a good way to show this right here. Anyway, it's got a heel. And the other one, I'm partway through the heel. I mean, it's on the needles. It's been this way for a while. I just haven't really picked it up. Um, it'll get done. <laughs> so I have that. I also, which the last time you saw it, they weren't done yet. So now it's done. One heel's put in, the other heel's not. I've also been working on Twitchy Sock. I can't remember how big this was the last time you saw it. But I have a feeling it was much shorter. So, because I've actually, I like watching the design develop. So I've actually been futzing with it or knitting just a couple more rows till I get to the next stripe sequence. Um, it's got a fairly big stripe sequence. The red here lines up with what did I decide? Oh, the red here. So, because this toe is really this. This one's the more obvious one because it's starting to get to be the same uh, number of stitches. So they are. So, Although even then, it's a little different because the, I think it's just because of the number of stitches. This black and white stripe here with the red on top is a little different than how it came out up here. So, but I just think they're fun. So periodically I'll be at work and I'll do like one route just because. Um, the other thing I'm working on is the Wrinkle in Time shawl by the Unique Sheep. Now this started January 1st and uh, they just sent out Clue 3 and I'm four rows into Clue 3. So I'm not too far behind. <laughs> um, it actually goes this way. So I don't know how well this is going to show up. I have pictures and I'll post them, but they're not. The color is totally off. Because every time I try and take a picture, it's nighttime. It's dark out. I mean, it's dark outside because it's nighttime. It's kind of dark anyway because it's winter. Um, it's cold. I'm taking an indoor picture. All in all, the, pic the color has been awful. So I'm kind of curious how it's going to turn out here. But anyway... Um, the clues come out on Fridays. I will probably end up behind, but that's okay. Um, then I've been working on my pumpkin passport. So, um, I was kind of curious. The January's, this is, uh, comes out every month. Um, there will be a different location. So like this one, this January is actually London. Missy! She keeps trying to get into all the Ikea bins. Which wouldn't, I wouldn't actually care, except for she's really noisy when she does it. Um, anyway, January actually came with, uh, it came with a border here, uh, a border here, uh, another border there and down lower. And um, right there it's supposed to say, let's go on an adventure. And this is actually only about halfway it's it's 
wider. Um, and then January's picture. I kind of wish they had released it sooner because I think there's actually more on January than there is going to be on any other month because it included all the borders plus January's picture. But anyway, I, uh, I figure I'll do the borders throughout the year. But anyway, and so I'm, I only have so much time in the evening, especially since I'm working out. So yesterday I chose to work on the shawl. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. So I'm actually using the Knit Companion app for this. Not because it's, um, it's not super helpful. It's not like the stitch markers or anything help you. But it, it's nice because I can blow it up. I could crop it, crop the main picture down to just the January square or January picture. So in that way, it's nice. Otherwise, it, the features of Knit Companion don't help particularly well. I uh, had seen something saying that Goodreader worked really well for some patterns. And I got really excited because... Um, the person demonstrating was showing how when they clicked on a stitch on their cross stitch pattern, they could highlight, click the highlight, choose to highlight, and they could click on a box and it would highlight that box. And so they could use it to mark off which squares they had done. Well, the pattern she was using must have been text based because it worked great for what she was doing. I tried to do it with the frosted pumpkin stitchery and it did not work it said that there was no text in that location so I'm thinking it had to be that it's an image so then if I was going to use it I had to actually like draw rectangles and stuff and I did it for a little bit and then decided it was too much work and I went back to using the knit companion um I'm going to look at the things that were like critical to tell you because Like I said, I have more to tell you and show you. I don't want to try and do it all. Um, oh, oh, okay. There was one more topic. I'm like, I, I thought there was something else. I was going to just walk through um, kind of a list of what I got done this week. Or this week, last year. Because it's kind of interesting. Now, I didn't set any 2016 goals. <laughs> In fact, I actually posted something saying that I was giving myself permission to not do any goals. Because I feel like this year at work, there are a lot of things to get done. And I just don't want that pressure on me for the rest of my life, too. So, I, uh, but... I did count out how what I got done last year. I got done four afghans. Now, one of them I had actually started in 2014. That was the um, K-Facet striped blanket. That one was actually started in 2014, but it was finished in 2015. And the other three blankets, the other three afghans were all 2015. Um, seven hats, eight scarves slash cowls, Three comfort shawls, uh, because I we did comfort shawls last year too, so. Uh, one cardigan, the one I took to work. One pair of socks. Now, I was talking to Heather, to Nandy, and she thought that was kind of funny because I've been talking about I don't have enough socks. And it seems like I always have twitchy socks, but I only work on them. The ones I have right now, because I'm really, I like the pattern I've been taking to work and actually working on more often, but usually twitchy socks are purely for going to the movies. And we don't actually go to that many movies, and I don't get that much done. I hear some people go to the movies, and they get like two, three inches done. I get like maybe, I get like an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So, um, so yeah, I only got one pair of socks done last year. Uh, five amigurumi things. Now, in that, I counted the kangaroo, the miniatures. I don't remember what the other item was. I don't remember now. <laughs> um, five other. Um, that would be the pillow for best friend's mom. Um, 
uh, three dishcloths I made for a friend and a mini stocking which I left in the other room. I'll have to post a picture. Um, it's not really supposed to be a stocking. It's for the Natopia retreat and if you want you can make a little mini sock and um, hang it up. Put a five dollar prize and they're making a sock garland and I guess they started it last year but I missed it last year so um, and three skeins of hand spun. Now, I would like to possibly get more spinning done this year, but again, I don't feel like setting a goal. I just, I know that as soon as I start doing that, I'm going to be annoyed with it. So, I also read 16 books, according to uh, Goodreads, and I had a goal of 12, so I exceeded that. Now, most of them are a combination of listening and reading so and a couple of them were books I had to read with my son for his English class last year but I totally counted them because I still read them so that was my project count I was also trying to think about like what things were on my list of goals last year and I said I wanted to do three craftsy classes well I didn't I did one um, I did uh, one of the brioche ones and I ended up making my bro brioche hat actually I used two classes in order to understand brioche, so maybe I should count it as two. <laughs> but anyway, um, I got on my bike. I put my condo up for sale. I sold my condo. It went into this year, but it's sold, and there was nothing I could do about that. I mean, I prepped it. There's nothing really you can do after that. Um, uh, I said I was going to do 5K, and I did the virtual... I actually did two virtual 5Ks with um, Sarah, who is Rain Lover of the Rainy Day Rainy Day Knits podcast. It used to be Rain Lover Knits, and then she changed it. Raindrop, maybe? I don't remember. It's on YouTube only now, so I don't catch it very often. Um, yeah, and I kind of also, even though I didn't run the 5Ks, I gave myself permission to accept that one because of the fact that I also started seeing the personal trainer and started working out every, you know, most days and stuff like that. So, um, when I got back from being on break, I had a, that Wednesday, I had a meeting with the personal trainer and I worked out now last week, the week from hell, I didn't get any working out done, but this week, yesterday and today, I worked out so which is part of the reason I look like this because I already took a shower in fact I am actually wearing pajama pants <laughs> I normally never do that I normally am always fully dressed when I talk to you guys but today I was like no I really needed a shower because I was feeling gross and I want a pajama pants <laughs> and you can't see them anyway they're actually pajama pants I bought for Christmas I bought a pair for my son and Tiff and me so we could watch movies the day after Christmas in our pajama pants. Um, and we did. <laughs> so, all right. That is all the stuff I'm going to tell you this week. Um, next week I will share the yarn I got and the two books that Best Friend got me. And whatever other progress. I actually should not say next week because the way things have been going, it may not be next week. So... I will, I haven't been pausing enough, so I will stick pictures at the end, and uh, yeah, I think that's everything. <laughs> Bye now. And remember, no show notes. If you have a question, you can ask. Most everything should be on my project list, you know, if you go hunting for it. I just, not this week. <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. Bye.